Hello and welcome to another reflection as we continue pondering over the words of Saint Isaiah the Solitary. And today I would like to focus a bit on his words on prayer and on our need to be watchful and to guard our heart at all times. He writes, the demons cunningly withdraw for a time in the hope that we will cease to guard our heart, thinking we have now attained peace. Uh, he is giving us a warning that the call of the gospel uh, is a constant one. We don't really have a choice. Uh, it's not about being watchful for an hour or half an hour. Uh, it's about changing our attitudes, changing our whole way of being uh, to that of being attentive to what is taking place within us, uh, to keep guard over ourselves. He continues, I entreat you not to leave your heart unguarded so long as you are in the body. Up to his last breath, he cannot know what passion will attack him. So long as he breathes, therefore, he must not leave his heart unguarded, but should at every moment pray to God for his help and mercy. Uh, constant prayer. Uh, sometimes when we hear that call to unceasing prayer, uh, we might be forgiven for thinking, well, that's surely not for me. Uh, it's mission impossible. How can I continue to pray at all times when I have to work, uh, when I have to do so many things during the day? Uh, so often we might find ourselves saying, well, I don't have time to pray. Now, if we say that to ourselves, I don't have time to pray, uh, the Catechism reminds us that we haven't yet understood what prayer is about. Uh, because if we say, I don't have time to pray, the presumption is prayer is one of those things that we do in life, uh, one of the many things that we have to do. And that means uh, once we go through the priorities, through the essential things that we have to get on with during our day, sometimes we do run out of time. And we might end up continually saying, well, I've been so busy, I've done this, I've done that, I didn't have time to pray. Uh, so what is the Lord uh, teaching us uh, through the church? Well, the church is reminding us that prayer uh, is about your whole attitude and about your way of being. Uh, being spiritual doesn't mean that you spend a lot of time in the chapel. Uh, being spiritual shows in your daily life, in how you relate to one another, in how you go about doing your shopping, or how you relate to the people who serve you, uh, the people who stack the shelves, uh, whether you are patient when you drive uh, and are stuck in a traffic jam. Uh, all of these are ways of showing that you are spiritual, that you are a person of prayer. That doesn't mean that you don't have specific times where you want to pray, uh, either that you want to say specific prayers at given times of the day uh, to help you to come closer to God, to reflect on his life and what he did for us. Um, but it does mean looking at prayer in a slightly different way. St. Isaiah explains prayer and compares it to being in the city. Uh, the city, I presume, is an image of security, image of safety, uh, image of strength, support. Uh, and he wants us to remain in that city. He wants us to become aware that we need to pray, that without prayer, without ourselves putting ourselves in the presence of God and becoming more aware of God's presence within us, and how God is present to us at each moment of our day, then we do open ourselves up uh, to all sorts of things uh, that lead us away from the Lord. So the need to pray at all times, uh, as well as the need to do our best to make sure that the words we pray, the words we use in prayer, match what is happening within our heart. Uh, and that's what makes true prayer challenging. 
sometimes uh, when we pray the divine office, uh, it will mean that we say prayers, we say the psalms, uh, that at times don't match what we go through. Uh, the beauty of the divine office is that when we do pray the psalms, uh, we can be certain that we are praying in union with the whole church. We are praying not just for ourselves, but for other people. Uh, and that means that for some people, what I pray here in my house, in the chapel, uh, does apply to so many of my brothers and sisters across the world. So sometimes we will pray things that do not match what we go through deep within us. Uh, but we do it on behalf of those who are going through it. Uh, at other times, uh, we will ref we will face ourselves with a difficulty in praying. Uh, we might hear some news about somebody. Uh, we might face our own struggles. There might be certain circumstances. Things happen. Things are being said uh, that affect us. Uh, it's no point denying that we are not affected by what goes on around us. Uh, and all of this has an impact on how we feel about prayer, or apart from the feelings, uh, the actual ability to pray. Uh, uh, because feelings can have such a power over us. Uh, and so I might hear some news that will affect my ability, my desire to actually pray. I may find it difficult to find myself just simply saying prayers. And at that moment, it might be a moment of invitation and a bit of a revelation to me uh, that God wants a different prayer from me. Maybe it's precisely at those moments of struggle that the Lord teaches me and wants me to understand something different. Pope Francis, even in today's uh, message, uh, one of his tweets talks about the difficulty that we may experience in prayer. And when we do, uh, to simply look at him, to look at his image, uh, maybe to raise our hearts to heaven, uh, to imagine him within us. But whatever we do, uh, whatever works for us, the importance of looking at him. Now, that also may be a challenge for us. Uh, for whatever reason, we might not even want to look at his image. Uh, we might find it so difficult to do it. But it's important to realize that the Lord looks at us at those times. He knows our difficulty. He knows everything about us. Uh, and so even that desire, that struggle to be present to him, that struggle to look at him, uh, that struggle of letting him know how difficult it is for me to pray at the moment, is already a prayer in itself. Uh, and sometimes words don't come easy to us at prayer. Sometimes when we are really affected by something, uh, all we can do is maybe to be silent, uh, maybe to allow ourselves to feel the pain and the hurt. Uh, maybe sometimes we are just reduced to tears. Uh, and whatever happens to us, it's important to realize, and that's the message of St. Isaiah and of the Church, is that whether it's through tears, whether it's that pain, uh, this is the real prayer that we are making and offering to the Lord at that moment. And so let's continue to pray for the courage to live that gospel. St. Isaiah reminds us of being watchful over our heart, uh, to continue to pray, to never cease, to never allow any sense of peace that you have to stop you from prayer, but to continue because you never know when the hour, when the moment will come, uh, that something happens to you when the Lord wants to visit you in a special way. Uh, so be open to him through prayer. And don't be discouraged. And even if the only prayer you can make today is by looking up towards the heavens or looking at the crucifix, and even if no words come out of you, you are praying. 
And that's the main point for us to hold on to today.